This is a photo of the SCF Primorie tanker at the port of Marcus Hook, Pennsylvania. The ship used to frequent American and European ports. But recently, the 84,000-ton vessel has been spotted off the coast of India after traveling there from Russia, according to ship tracking data. India used to buy almost no Russian oil simply because of the long distance uh, from Russia's uh, seaports to India. That changed after Moscow's invasion of Ukraine in February. We're banning all imports of Russian oil and gas and energy. After the West announced sanctions, an unprecedented amount of Russian oil has been heading to China, India, and other countries that have ramped up purchases at a discounted price. For Russia, that means more revenue than ever before, as much as $20 billion in average monthly oil sales this year compared to $14.6 billion last year. So here's how Russia's economy is getting help from oil trade with China and India. Before the war, the European Union was the largest consumer of Russian crude, spending the equivalent of more than $48 billion on it last year. A ban on almost 90% of all Russian oil imports by the end of the year. As the EU scales down purchases, other countries have negotiated deals to buy from Russia. This map shows some routes that Russian oil travels on board tankers like the SCF Primorie to the Middle East and Asia. Because of uh, the reluctance of the EU and uh, other buyers to take Russian oil, it's selling at a discount. Lori Melevirta is a lead analyst at the Finland-based Center for Research on Energy and Clean Air. The organization has been tracking Russian oil shipments since the invasion. You can get a barrel of uh, uh, Russian oil at about 30% less than other type of oil. And that's a big incentive to switch to using uh, Russian oil uh, when that's possible. For example, China, which had already been the largest single buyer of Russia's crew before the war, has ramped up imports. In August, China bought over 1 million barrels a day, almost doubling what it bought in February. While Beijing didn't openly support Moscow in its invasion of Ukraine, and commodity watchers say China is mostly buying this oil because of its low price, this business partnership has become very important for the Kremlin. And India has also become a huge market for Russia. In June, it had increased imports of Russian oil by more than 25-fold since the start of the war. And those imports were carried by tankers like this one in this satellite image captured off the coast of India. As a, an alternative buyer, India has been significant. It's the largest single increase in uh, imports from Russia uh, since the start of the war. The demand from China and India, along with high oil prices, have boosted Russia's energy sales, even if it exports slightly less oil overall. But it doesn't mean Moscow no longer needs the West. Europe still buys more than 50% of Russia's energy resources, and new sanctions could further threaten those sales. In September, the G7 agreed to impose a price cap on Russian oil. The plan would ban Russian crude shipments from getting services like insurance from G7 countries if the oil is sold over a certain price. And since more than half of the vessels that carry Russian oil are owned by EU companies, analysts say such a price cap could reduce the cash flow for Moscow. Russian oil imports still completely reliant on the use of uh, the European capacity to move oil. And if Europe really ends up imposing a full ban on Russian oil imports like it has proposed, higher demand in Asia is unlikely to compensate for the loss of Russia's biggest export market. China is already buying everything more or less that uh, Russia can ship to the Pacific market. And India is uh, buying less than 10% of, of the oil in total, so still dwarfed by Europe. Still, the strong demand for Russia's oil by some of the world's biggest economies has the potential to take the sting out of Western sanctions. And unless stronger measures are taken, this might mean more long-distance journeys for the SCF Primorie.